Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to a uh, very special episode of... Uh, it's not an episode, it's just a video on YouTube. Uh, Garrett Robinson here, independent author. I am here with Ksenia Ansky. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, it's okay. okay. It's, it's passable. It's passable. <laughs> it's close enough. Um, Ksenia is the uh, uh, wonderful author of a, a series of books called uh, Siren Suicides. There's three of them, correct? Yeah. Trilogy, okay. And is it is it just the three like as a trilogy, or are there more going that are going to be coming? No, just three. Just three. Okay, cool. So the Siren uh, Suicides trilogy, um, and she is a a I I feel like you are a force on Twitter um, because you've got so many people who are always talking about you and and tweeting about you and tweeting at you and being retweeted by you. Um, so I wanted to just do an interview with you in the writing process and, and find out. And this is actually, you should feel very honored. This is the first author interview where I've actually done interview cards. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Thank actually, you. I'm honored. Yeah, actually, right? Yeah. I wrote down shit to say. Can you believe it? No, I cannot. Obviously. <laughs> um, so why don't we start off with you uh, telling us about yourself. Uh, what do you do? Um, I write books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, and where are you, where are you, I mean, you know, we don't need your home address, but whereabouts are you? Um, in Seattle. You're in Seattle? Mm -hmm. Oh, for some reason I thought you were in, like, when you said you were Pacific, I thought you were, like, Northern California. Okay, so Seattle. Yeah. And, um, but originally, are you originally from Russia, or are you just of, like, Russian descent, or what? Yeah, I'm originally from Moscow, Russia. I came to U.S. about 15 years ago. Okay, cool, awesome. So you've been here a bit. Mm-hmm. And you've got a family, right? Or at least a son. I know, I know there was a, an incident with the son recently. Yeah, I have two kids. My daughter's in college right now. She's doing okay. graphic design, and she's actually um, designed the covers for my books and did the illustrations. Awesome. Um, so your books have illustrations inside? Mm-hmm, for every Oh, time. good. And good my son know. is in um, school still. So one done, one more to go. Awesome. Do you want to do you want to talk about the recent Russia incident with your son, or yeah. do you want to? Yeah. yeah that's what fine. happened on that? Because that was a whole that was a whole story that I was following very closely. Um. Well, to start off, we sent him off alone with uh, permission to travel from both parents, but it was done in English, and um, he was rounded up at the airport because um, the language of Russia is Russian, and obviously they demanded the document in Russian. And, we were puzzled because our daughter traveled alone before, but because she um, she's from my previous marriage and her father was Russian and he supplied this document, which is permission for her to travel in Russian, we forgot about the document altogether. So then I tried to, you know, reason with the grandmother and trying to collect the documents, trying to find people to give the document over. I camped out at the airport, gave the document over, but it was permission only for me. Because my ex, because my son is from my second marriage. See, this is where it gets interesting and personal. Um, but we're all great friends. Um, he was camping in the mountains, and he had no cell reception at all. And I, you know, tried to operate alone. And uh, that was his mother, and she basically was not feeling comfortable going through security with just my permission alone. Because even though we're divorced, they might still demand everything from everyone. So then I said, okay, fuck it. I'm just going to gather everything I have, every single document, including my own birth certificate, and I'll just go and get him, which I did. Nobody asked for a single piece of paper except our passport. Wow, awesome. So you just went over and, and that, that handled the whole thing. Yeah, I just, you know, I wanted him home before school started, and it's it sucked because it caught into my savings. <laughs> and I'm not planning on that trip, but... You know, my baby's home, I'm happy, and that's all that matters. I, I have to give you mad props. I mean, you know, I, I don't know that there's a lot of people where there's like, you know, there, there's, there's a problem, okay, I'm going to fly halfway around the world and just fix it. That's like, that's, that's an admirable attitude to have. Well, you know, I was a, a fierce mother. I walked up to them with this look of, you even try to not let my son through, I'll eat you alive. And nobody asked anything. <laughs> wow. So it was literally just that he didn't, that, you know, he didn't have, like, the correct permission slip in Russian to travel alone, even though he's uh -oh. an American citizen. 
Yeah, and it's, you know, I've, I mean, I, I even called the Senate office, I called everybody, the embassy in Moscow and everyone, but he has dual citizenship, and the trick is that if he enters the country at the Russian passport, he's considered a Russian citizen while he's there. So he told me, there's nothing we can do. I said, he's an American citizen, he was born here, and they said, nope, it doesn't apply, you know, and wow. it, when I looked at the law itself, um, the Russian law, it states so... Um, not very clear about the rights, and it just you can twist it anyway. And because I'm from Russia and I grew up there, the bureaucracy is such that if somebody doesn't like you, they might make your life difficult. You know. So I thought there is no guarantee, even if we supply the documents, that he would be let through. They'll find something else just because. And I just wanted a hundred percent guarantee to get him home. And so yeah, I hopped on the plane. Interesting. Wow. Um, all right. Well, let's uh, let's start talking about the writing. Uh, how did how where did your desire to write come from? How long have you been wanting to do it? And and how did how did you start? Um, hmm. You know, originally I remember the very first inklings of stories when I was very little. I would just um, kind of escape into my head a lot. I didn't have a very pretty childhood, and I um, also didn't have very many toys, so I would invent things, you know, and I would look at like a stone and it would look crazy and I would just invent stories in my head, but I didn't think about it as writing. Now that I'm a writer, I realized that I was creating cool stories in my head and living in them like in movies, mm. you know, um, which could be considered creepy, right? <laughs> um, and I have whole uh, worlds going on in my uh, head. <laughs> yes, um, but I first started writing a diary when I was 15. Um, wrote that for a couple of years, and then I was a young mom at 18. Well, I ran away from home when I was 16, became pregnant at 17, 18, I was a mom, and from then on, my life started being about my kids. I didn't write anything anymore, right. until it kind of started breaking through later. Um, you know, I told stories to my kids, and then I was trying to write just short stories for my son, trying to teach him both Russian and English, because he was born here. Um, I even did a startup company, that created animations, you know, trying to teach kids English because I didn't like what I was seeing on TV. And um, from there, I got this wild idea. I remember I went to a movie festival and I really liked one movie. Uh, and a young girl hops out on the stage and she's like, Hi, I just did this movie with some friends on credit cards. And I was like, Really? That's, you can do it, I can do it. It was just. One of those wow. things, you know, um, so I wrote a screenplay. I didn't know what a screenplay was. I studied about it, and I wrote it, and I shot a movie, produced it. It's sitting in my garage and gathering dust because it's awful. Um, <laughs> but, did you ever finish editing it? it, it did it yeah, get proposed? Yeah, it is. It's a 20-minute movie. Well, it was supposed to be a feature, but then I ran out of money, obviously. Um, tried to kind of glue together a short out of it, edited it, and so now it's... It was quite an experience, I'll never forget it, but it was awful. And um, I kept searching, I guess something in me kept searching for a way out to tell stories. Um, but then I never really thought about it until later again I started writing for therapy because I've always had this weird feeling something was wrong with my body when I was 16 and I ran away from home and I was always had this feeling that I don't remember my childhood, I don't remember things and I want to dig you know, and so finally, I was in a place in my life and I was happy, everything was good, and I was like, okay, now I'll dig, because I also had money for therapy. Mm. Um, and I started writing, and it was very dark and very creepy, and then it started being very disturbing and very bloody, and then at some point, my therapist was like, do you know, have you ever thought that maybe you were abused when you were little? And I thought, huh, that really rings true, you know, and... I just dove into it. Long story short, when I was 33, I remembered I was sexually abused by my father and my step-grandfather, and I wanted to kill myself. So I'm just fast-forwarding to you several years where therapy and writing pulled me out because I was really suicidal for about two months, and that's why um, the series, the books are called Siren Suicides, because it, it is about suicide. But I was never... Um, I, was, I was a chicken. You know, I never really actually tried it. You know how some people try it and then they get rounded up in the hospital. I never, never did. And I thought about my kids, and um, 
So it was not a pretty story. I wish I had this awesome, pretty answer for you where it's like... No, I, yeah, I think it's very important for people. I'm writing and I have these idols and... No. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I actually didn't even know I was a writer until my friends pushed me into it. Um, but what started it again was I started writing a blog. Well, basically what happened, my family got really pissed off at me, obviously. They said that I'm imagining things and nothing ever like this happened and I'm crazy and I need to see a doctor and blah, blah, blah. And I said... Well, I'm going to go public about it because they denounced me. And I, um, writing sort of gave me reason to, to live. I guess once you go through it, maybe people will understand. But literally, people ask me, they're like, why are you doing this? Why are you digging this up? You're an exhibitionist. Why are you posting it online? What's wrong with you? You know. And I said, you know, people who comment come back to me. They, they tell me the same thing happened to them, and that's... That's why I'm doing it, is because they can talk about it. And they told me in private that this gave them courage to open up. And I said, that's why I'm doing it. Yeah. So I started blogging. And that's hidden right now on my blog. I blogged for about a year and a half. And that's the first time when people, well, before that I was writing marketing newsletters and business plans for my startup. People told me, yours is the only marketing newsletter I read. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and it does then, seem so, like it's. It does seem like that's a whole uh, a a thing a, a feature of those cultures that enable terrible things like that to happen. Is they definitely don't want people talking about it. But I no. I mean it, at least it's my personal belief that you can't you can't move you can't even begin to move on from it until you are talking about it or talking to somebody else about it or or somebody else is out there. I, you know keeping it. Yeah. So, so anyways, I started writing that blog, and then I got this idea. Somebody told me about writing groups, writers groups, and I, you know, somehow through some friend, I can't remember, I found one group, and I traded four groups until I found one that was really serious because I thought, okay, I want to write a book. My idea was this. I'm going to write my pain into a book, and then I'll publish it, and then I'll take it, and I'll burn it. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'll take it and I'll like chuck it in the bushes or I'll stomp. Like I wanted my pain to become physical where I can torture it. You know, I had this, I had so much anger in me back then. Um, that's why I started, and being me, I'm very stubborn. I was like, I'm going to learn how to do it right, <laughs> you know. But then I started writing it and my writers group, they're like, well, you can actually write. I'm like, no, I can't. You're out of your minds, obviously, because it's not even my first language. <laughs> I'm only writing this book to burn it. What are you talking about? Yes. And they said, no, you should. And so I wrote, um, it's actually downloadable on my website. It's, it's draft, I think, one, or I posted draft zero, 0, 0.5, draft one. Those are all the versions, but I think it's draft one, where I actually wrote up to 30,000 words. In the middle of writing it, I remembered that it was my father because I blocked it out so much that I remembered like the hands or the places, but I couldn't remember who it was. Mm -hmm. And so I was done with it. I'm like, okay, the purpose of this book is done. I don't want to write it, and I just want to die. Two months wow. passed, and then another year passed of therapy, and it was just like it was like seeing three doctors a week. You know, it was an interesting time. Wow. And then. I did, you know, one job and another consulting gig, and I just was biking home one day, and I met a friend, and he's like, so what are you doing now? I'm like, I don't know. I'll look for another client. He's like, you need to write this book. You know, friends who knew me. I'm like, no, I can't. He's like, yeah, you should. So I came home, and I thought, if not now, then never. Right. And that was last year. I remember May 15th when I thought, okay, to hell with it. I'll just, you know, quit my career. I'll just drop everything and I'll just do it and see what happens and, and so I did it and now it's self-published and now I'm hooked on writing and I'm like oh I can actually, that people are actually reading what I'm writing? That's bizarre. Right. That's great. That's fantastic. So um, so I was going to ask about uh, about the the top. I, I mean, I I understand what the topic of the book is, but it's not uh, it's not is is it autobiographical in any way, or is it simply drawing on the on the on the life experience and applying it to a new story? <laughs> well, when I was writing in with the writers group, there were a lot of things that were autobiographical, and they were really polite people. Like you know how people are supposed to read your writing, right. and it would be. They would saying, would be saying, well, I would um, this scene. It's a little, 
too graphical for my taste. I think your novel would really benefit if you cut it. I mean, they were really polite because it was awful. <laughs> it was <laughs> really, really bad, really graphic, and I look back at it now and I'm like, oh my god. So, I mean, people can download it and read it if they want to, but it's just, um, no. So the only reason for me to to be able to, the only way, I suppose, to get rid of it was to step away from the story and let the story become the story itself, you know. Mm -hmm. So there is nothing in there that's autobiographical, but there is, all of the emotions are true, but the story itself is new. So what is, what is the story then, if you can, if you, I mean, you know, if sure. you can summarize it? Um, the story is about a 16-year-old girl, Aileen Wright, and she lost her mother to suicide who jumped off the bridge, and she decides that she's had enough of her violent father, and she decides to drown herself. She attempts to drown herself, but she doesn't die. She turns into a siren, and then she discovers that her father is a siren hunter. So he proceeds hunting her, and she proceeds running away. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> And it all happens here in Seattle, in the lakes, and the water, and the river, and under the rain, and all watery stuff, you know. So it would be it would be paranormal then. Yeah, it's it's paranormal fantasy and a bit dark in places. People told me. And about, <clears throat> excuse me, about about um, how long is it? Um, the first book is about I think about eighty thousand words. The second is about the same, and the third is ninety three thousand. So here. I mean, I sold out of books. I have one of them here, which is a proof, mm -hmm. and that's the third one. You can see how thick it is. It's not very right. thick. Yeah. It's typical. It's a nice little size, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great, fantastic. Um, so when you when you when you buckled down, and you're like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do the Siren Suicide series. You published all three of them at once, right? Yeah, there was supposed to be one book, but then I realized that one book of 230,000 words is a bit too long, mm -hmm. or however many, I, I've lost count now. But anyway, it was just too thick, and I, you know, because my writing process is open and I'm on Twitter every day, people suggest that I break it up, and I thought, okay, I'll break it up, so I broke it up. Awesome. And um, did you find the did you find the writing easy? Like, what was your uh, how was your process? How did how did it go along? Were there rough patches and whatever, or did it all just kind of flow? Well, you know, it was it was um, cleansing, but it was horrible. I had to go through these almost daily crying bouts of half an hour before starting because I had to go back into my experiences. Uh -huh. and so painful. I was like, oh my god, I can't do it anymore, you know, and it's just, I, um, but then I also knew that it would be true, and so I had to do it. Um, so it's like ripping off Band-Aid, but every day, and a lot, and a lot, you know, so um, it was also really scary because I realized people want to read it, and I thought, I'm no good, I'm, I'm such an awful writer. I was just so unsure of myself and so scared, and this constant doubt was killing me. You know, I was just thinking, this is horrible. You know, I'd read it and I'd read, I don't know, Stephen King, and I'd be like, oh my God, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I've always found that reading a really good writer is very depressing because you get the <laughs> yeah. attitude, you get the attitude, oh God, I will never be able to do this. I'm like, I'm gonna be like you. You watch it. I'll show you. Yeah, you you know what my number one motivational thing is? What? Read an independent, uh, like like an award winning book, but like a small independent book award because it it won this award and you you so you get the Kindle version and you read it. Usually it's pretty terrible, and you're like, and this guy won an award, so I can I can do better than this. Okay, you'll have to give me suggestions then. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about uh, you as, as as an author. I mean, you say that uh, that you know you had these like uh, that it was hard and that you didn't know what you were doing. But at the same time, uh, at least nowadays, you post all of these these quotes and these things on your on your Twitter and everywhere else that I find not only hilarious but like really inspiring. Like your your writing quotes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and you've got your Blue Sparrow book. So where did that flip come about? Because now I, I I'm like, oh, she tweeted something. Oh, that's fucking awesome. I uh, you know it was 
this whole thing, people keep asking me, they're like, do you have a marketing strategy? Do you have an idea how to do it? Do you do you know this? Uh, you're a guru in self-publishing, yada, yada, yada. And I look at all of them, I'm like, no, honest, no, uh, don't beat me up. Because <laughs> what, seriously, what started last year, I started with 2,000 followers on Twitter, and I just timidly started posting things about writing because I started writing full-time, you know? And I would right. experience something like, Oh my God, you know, writing is like, I don't know, what did I say? Something, I remember I said, so there's only, well. I, I write because the blank time, page can't tell me to shut up or yeah, whatever. Yeah, something like this. I would be thinking about how, you know, I call back to Russia. Whenever when I tried, and actually when I went back, I tried to talk to my stepmom and my mom, and there, there's still a lot of animosity and anger, and like, it's really difficult for me to talk to them because they tell me, you made my life hell. Uh, you know, all the stuff you told me, but, so it's like I'm at fault. So, but I understand their anger, and so it was just, um, okay, you know what? This happens to me. I totally lost my thought. What did um, you ask you were me? Saying, you, were <laughs> you were saying that you started thinking up these things, and, uh, oh, and, yeah. and you, so yeah. I thought, see, that's totally ADD. I'm so ADD. Oh, my God. Um, so I would call them, and then I would think, well, they always tell me to shut up. Whenever I was little, whenever I tried telling what was going on, I was always told that I'm an actress, I'm imagining things, or to shut up. So I thought, you know what? This is why I write, because paper never tells me to shut up. There you <laughs> and go. I'll tweet it, and then people retweet it. I'm like, why are you retweeting it? This is just, you know, bullshit from my head. But it's uh, it's great. It's a great little like quotable soundbite. I try to think up sound bites and it just never works. But like you've just got a fucking mountain of them. I, What's the hold up yeah. that book again? This is your Blue Sparrow book, right? Yeah. Mhm. Mm okay. Let me see the front cover. Okay, so this is filled with here. Let me pull it up on the screen. So this is filled with all kinds of like uh, tweets about writing and and life and everything. And yeah. this was your this was the first book that you self published, like before yeah. Siren Suicides. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, people asked for it. I honestly wasn't planning. They were like, "You should make a book out of your tweets." I'm like, "Are you serious?" They're like, "Yeah." I go, "All right, fine. I'll make one." Hey, if Dennis Leary can do it, you can do it, right? <laughs> Well, I, you know, it's actually been selling, and I'm, I've been surprised. But uh, I thought it was a good training ground in terms of publishing, self-publishing, and yeah. I'm happy I did it because I learned a bunch of things. Right. Awesome. Um, all right. Now, uh, so going back to the uh, the Twitter and um, the other social media, you seem to have this huge following. I mean, I, I, uh, not sure what the exact number is, but I can actually pull it up here since uh, we are on our computers. Thousand or something like that. Yeah, you've got fucking sixty five thousand nine hundred and two followers. Like, okay, and like just for a frame of reference for people, I have <laughs> two hundred and ninety one, <laughs> not two hundred ninety one thousand. 291. So yeah. how, what do you do? Do you just, I mean, my, and, and I want to, I want to clarify an important thing before you answer, because a lot of people, like, I know certain individuals who I won't name, <laughs> Zach, who <laughs> buy Twitter followers, and, uh, you know, but the, the difference there is that he doesn't get, like, you know, they, they don't get a whole lot of interaction. You have so many people tweeting at you all the time. I'm like, my God, that's amazing. So, what do you, what, what, how do you do that? How did that process start? How long has it taken you to get there? Um, well, it's like I said, last year it was 2000. So that was in May, and we have now what September. Yeah. It took a little over a year, and still growing. Um, I, I guess I stopped being afraid to be myself. Um, because at first I was tweeting these tweets like people tweet, you know, or authors tweet or writers about, oh, this article is about blah, 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 or this link to da, da, da. And it's like boring. I mean, yeah. and, and when I tried to put out my emotions just timidly because um, I think I was looking at, I stumbled upon Maureen Johnson and I stumbled upon Chuck Wendig on Twitter and I saw that they do that and I'm like, oh, I can actually tweet things that I think about, you know, my way. And I started doing it, and people started responding, and I started doing it more, and people started responding more, and it was just, it started to snowball. And I was um, I was very diligent, like, I tried to follow people back, and I would also go and look at other writers, and I would follow them. And I tried to keep it up, and I remember it was 
you know, I think it was at first it was like about an hour a week, and then it started going to an hour a day, then two hours, then three hours, and finally my boyfriend was like, I'm not seeing you <laughs> in the evenings, and and then I just dropped. I actually tweeted and I said, I'm so sorry, guys, I cannot keep up anymore. So I stopped wow. about uh, whatever the number there is something it keeps dropping because Twitter sometimes deletes spam accounts, you know, so it goes right, right. But yeah, and I, I get this sometimes. People are like, no follow back. I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry, but I'll have to follow eight thousand people back to be fair. I just I can't do it anymore. Yeah. So you stop doing it. That might be my problem is I, I don't I like I, I, I do follow people back, but I try to keep myself I if I go over a hundred, I look through my list and I'm like, can I get rid of any of these people? So I'll get followed by like random people and I won't follow them back and after a couple of days they'll drop off, which I'm okay with. But yeah. maybe if I I should I think I should just follow everybody back for like a year and then when I Oh no, I, I didn't follow eliminate. like everybody back. You know, I would follow there's a lot of spam accounts and I did it all by hand. People kept asking me they're like, Do you have a machine or some tool you're using? Blah blah blah. I did use a tool but I did it by hand. I didn't do. I never did of those automatic things. You know, I don't believe in that kind of stuff. So right. that's why it escalated to three hours a night, and then I was like, "Wow, I can actually do other things. I don't have to do this whole follow and follow anymore." <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, all right. So, uh, in addition to your your writing and your interaction that you uh, have with people on Twitter, you've got a blog that um, that is. I, I like it. I, I've read many of the articles. I find them extremely yeah. enjoyable. What's your What's your goal with that? Is it for Is it primarily for your readers? Primarily for other writers? A little mix of both. What's your What's your blogging goal? Um, yeah, for other writers, I guess. I mean, I I used to write just about my adventures. Literally, I told people it's like the adventures of a rookie writer because I know nothing. I knew nothing. I just plunged into it, and I would write about the stupid things that I did, you know, or the great things that happened to me, or the bad things that happened, about everything. Right. And then people started asking me on Twitter, they're like, oh, can you write about this, or what about that? And now, I don't even write about my own stuff anymore. I always ask, you know, yeah. and whatever people want me to talk about, I pick out the topic that's either closely related to what I'm doing, and I'll have people vote, and then I just write about it. And um, I'm because I'm ADD. I'm a routine freak. You know, I have to have routines. So I have two days a week that I'm blogging, and so I created the system where through um, what is it? Um, Mailchimp, I think, is that yeah. I'm as a service. Yeah, so you get it as an email to people because I switched from the old blog blog platform to the new one, mm -hmm. and so. You know, I'm like, I have to write it because it's, it will automatically send it out at 11 in the morning. <laughs> right, right. So, um, but it also helps me process things that I did. You know, I'm just realizing more and more that writing, I love writing because it's like processing things and putting them on page and then they kind of, it's like the perfect therapy. They just get out of your system and they help other people. So I just wanted to help other people, you know, because there are so many people that are afraid to try things. I'm one of those crazy folks. I'll just like, yes, and just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just like, don't go, and I'll be like, oh my god, that's exciting. I don't know what's there. I'll go, and yeah. So I just thought, if I can do it, I'll, I'll just want to help others. You know. That's very awesome. Super, super awesome. Well, I love the blog. Um, I've, well, I've tremendously enjoyed several of the articles, and, and, you know learned a lot of stuff too. Um, if anybody out there is is you know watching this and is a, a aspiring author and, and everything like that, definitely check it out. And it is Ksenia Ansk dot com, right? Yeah. I buy okay, cool. the reader. And I'm going to give people really quickly here the spelling of your name. So right there on my thing, that's how you spell her name. And you yeah. can find and that's that's the key to finding her. On Twitter she's at Ksenia Ansky. Uh, and on uh, your blog, it's that.com. So anybody who's uh, watching this, there you go. I'm also on YouTube dancing on my bed under that. Yes, bed. I saw that video. Uh, when I, I don't remember why, but uh, it was, I think you tweeted it or something, and I was like dancing on her bed. All right, I'm going to keep my finger on the pause button in case this gets a little racy. Um, but uh, in addition to in addition to your uh, writing, do you or, or or as as part of your writing, do you have like 
broader um, societal or, or, or goals that you're trying to achieve in terms of like what, how you want to reach out to people or what you want to communicate to people, you know, what kind, some kind of change you're trying to enact in the world? or um, Yeah, just, you know, have people see that there's love everywhere. I don't know. Siren Suicides primarily was about um, just trying to show to people how you feel when you really want to kill yourself. I There was so much of it that I felt. Um, and honestly, I actually didn't plan anything, but um, I've had over 300 beta readers. And one of my beta readers was in Austria. Without me knowing, she actually was helping um, difficult teenagers, or however they were labeled there. Um, mm -hmm. And she read draft four, not draft five. She read some chapters out loud, and one boy came over to her after the session and said that he was contemplating suicide, but after listening to it, that he wanted to talk to her. And I just bowled my eyes out the whole day. I thought, okay, I didn't think about it, but if my book can help, you know, people start talking about it, that's what I want. I mean, that would make my life. It's really, uh, I mean, it is It is a thing that I think a lot of people are going through. I mean, I, I, I hardly know anybody who hasn't been affected by it in one way or another. My best, best friend from high school, uh, you know, killed himself. And it's... Yeah. It's a terrible, terrible thing, and I think, I mean, this is just an outsider's perspective, and I'm nobody important, but I think that what you're doing in providing people a, play, a, a safe place where, where they can talk about things like that is, is tremendously valuable, and it's one of the reasons that I wanted to interview you, because not everybody talks about it, you know? Yeah. Well, I, I got reviews on my book and a bunch of reviews, because I have this introduction in the book stating, you know, that I want to maybe hopefully save a life or two with it, and they were like, no, nah, she didn't achieve it, and da 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 and I'm totally cool with that because I tried, and maybe I'm not good enough of a writer yet. You know, I only wrote what I felt. Uh, right. I was surprised people read it, and if you can touch at least one person, like that boy, you know, that's enough for me. I mean, that's like golden. Um, but I've actually had a few people reach out to me and saying, wow, this is so awesome. Like, I would be weirded out because I thought, no, it can't be awesome. It's just my first book. And they would be like, no, 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 it is, it is, it is. And I thought, well, maybe that's the person that I really hit. And that's, if that's all I do, you know, just one life, that's like, that's enough for me. You have to, yeah. You, you do have to write for the people that you're writing for. And if somebody, if somebody doesn't get it, they're not going to get it. it. Doesn't mean that the book is bad. It just means that it's not for them. You know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, if but, somebody likes hardcore science fiction, they're not going to like Siren Suicide. Sorry, yeah, yeah. but it's just, it's not your book. <laughs> no, but it's also very when you're contemplating suicide emotionally, you're such a wreck that people told me that the book was exhausting for them because it was up and down, up and down, up and down. The main character was in constant turmoil and I try to explain to them that's exactly how you feel. Right. Um, and I'm still waiting for the third book reviews because people would read the first one and I don't know if they read the second one and the third one. I'm like, I'm dying for you to tell me what you thought about the ending because the ending is important and I have yet to see a review of the third book and see what people think. Yeah, I, I just want to give a brief call out to people because, I mean, with with all the, the following you've got and everything, I don't know if people realize how important reviews are. You've got a couple reviews on Amazon and um, a, a couple dozen reviews on Goodreads, but it's like, people, if you, if you read her book, oh, wow, hi, that's my daughter. Hello. Say hi. Hi. Okay, can hi. you just play with mommy, sweetie? <laughs> okay, go play with the tower, sweetie. Sorry about that. That's okay. Rampant professional over here. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, independent authors, you know, live and die off of reviews. So if you're if if you're one of Ksenia's readers, I just want to let you know, go review her fucking book. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, see, I'm not. I don't ask people like, hey, do my review, or you know, I'm just if they yeah. do, it's great. If not. I'm Which makes you a really good person. I am. I, I I get complaints sometimes. It's like Garrett, chill out a little bit. I'm like, okay, sorry, but no, you you're probably doing it the right way. I um well, to be honest with you, I don't have much time. I have like six months worth of savings left, and I have Rosehead. I'm finishing the novel, and I have the next one, Irkadurant, um, 
that I'm planning on writing and that's enough. Those six months, I have to finish that one and that one. And I'm like, I don't have time. <laughs> I only have time to write as fast as I can before my money runs out. And what, uh, what, um, that question just totally disappeared from my mind. You talk about forgetting things, I forget things as well. What, uh, what is Rosehead about? Um, so that is, I can tell you the full story or the short story. Um, I should probably bail because my daughter's going to uh, pop in here again. So why don't you give me a, a synopsis? Okay. The short story is it's about a 12-year-old girl um, with her dog, talking dog, talking whippet, who goes to a family reunion in Germany to her grandfather's house. And he's like this famous rose grower. You know, his roses are extra red. They live extra long. And she discovers that he's feeding something very interesting to those raw roses you know and um, that's why they live for so long and that's why they're so bloody red and so she solves this mystery with her dog and it's kinda like um, her favorite book is The Hound of the Baskervilles there's a lot of references to Sherlock Holmes and so she's nice. like Sherlock Holmes and the dog is like Watson and they make jokes about it and uh, <laughs> the, it's, it's, it's a very different book from Siren Suicides I wrote this one for fun although there are the original idea came from something very dark but I'll spare you that because you have to get back to your dog alright 10-4 um, alright so where uh, let's uh, let's end off with uh, where can people find you other than uh, uh, your website where are you published are you only on Amazon or are you on the various other sites well so what happened is because I had to go to Moscow to Russia I've stopped the process. I'm going to be everywhere. So at this point, I'm only on Amazon, but I'll also be, you know, on Scribd and Kobo and uh, Lulu, which is going to get me into iBooks and uh, what else is there? I can't remember. Basically everywhere, you know. Awesome. I just I haven't even gotten to the point of like yesterday. I was tired at 9 p.m. and I was like, what? You know, I had to go to bed to sleep because I'm still jet lagged. I'm like, I can't believe it. I was mad at my body because I wanted to write. I have three views I'm behind, and so no, no, no. I'll I'll upload it everywhere. Um, I mean, everywhere that that is everywhere. It depends on what you mean by it, but yeah. But pretty much, basically everywhere. If somebody's yeah. got an e-reader, they can they can fucking they can get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and also on my website, the files for ebooks are free. To download, there's Mobi and EPUB and PDF. Um, that should. Come. I'd love to talk to you about that because um, just for as a quick explanation for anybody watching, Ksenia has her books for free on her website, and you can donate in exchange for them, or you can basically just get them for free, or you can go and buy them on Amazon. And I would love to talk to you about that. Um, we might have to do it another time because sure. unfortunately, I am yeah, out of yeah, time. Yeah, that's a whole another topic. Yeah, for sure. Well, Ksenia, thank you so much for doing this interview. This is like totally awesome. Um, I really enjoyed talking to you, and I hope uh, we get to do it again sometime. We'll talk. We'll talk about the uh, the storytelling podcast. Um, yeah. I'm gonna talk to Zach, and we'd love to do an interview with you on sure. there as well. Sure. Awesome. Thanks again for ta uh, for coming on to talk. Uh, thanks for our three live viewers who tuned in during the uh, show. We appreciate oh, you wow. watching. Oh, Yeah, I know, right? Three people are watching us as this occurs. Crazy. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, good to uh, talk to you, and we'll see you later. Okay. Take care. All right. Bye.